I had been living in Seattle and I'd been there a couple years and I would take these random night classes from and just because I had some AmeriCorps money to use up and found this it sounded very interesting to take this evening class to help restore this old wooden boat that got burned in the Lake Union fire and I thought oh okay I'll do this didn't even really know that this was an option for a career didn't grow up sailing I don't have any woodworkers in the family and so it was a wow. totally happenstance and being able to start with nothing and then you have this end product that's very practical and usable and is beautiful because the lines of some boats are extremely sexy and other boats are not so <laughs> and so that's a design thing and then of course wood I love working with wood because it grew at one time and it's alive and yeah. you can move it and maneuver it and it's a, a wonderful medium to work in but in simple terms I am boatyards programs manager so I run Mainly uh, one of the big staple that has been a staple for a while at the museum is the Apprentice for a Day program where we build new boats and use it as an educational tool. We start from the first thing we do is we loft the boat out full scale, uh, which is basically just taking the architectural drawings and drawing them life size so that we can then make patterns and such and go on. And the stipulation is that people know that this is used as a teaching tool and so they're going to get a very good product but you also know that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to work on your boat yeah. and help build a boat. Yeah. But within that is if you really wanted to be, say you commissioned us to build a boat, you could very much come in and work with us every weekend if you wanted to and you could pretty much build the boat with us yeah. Yeah. which is ideal yeah, but not everybody wants to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, So it's, it's helpful on all avenues. I would say it's every person's different so every person wants comes here wanting to learn a difference maybe they already have the skills to work with wood so maybe they're coming to be more of a community of people working on a project together or maybe they have never used certain tools or it's kind of a little bit of everything yeah. um, I do a woman's uh, beginning woodworking class and that is always super fun and I'm like, I get paid to do this. This is really great. Uh, the last course that we did, it was 12 women, ages uh, 20 something to 76. Wow. And lots of friendships were built after that. And they come home and they gain a bit of skill set and whatnot. And then they go home with a finished product. Uh -huh. And then there, you know, uh, a lot of the women say, oh, well, you know, this is not something that was even offered to me when I was younger, of course, because yeah. you think about 50 years ago, oh, God. you know, yeah. um, there was no wood shop in my school. Um, and I'm even on the younger end of things. And yeah. so, uh, you know, pretty, pretty unique and interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, but there's a lot of women that do stuff that don't, you know, men were sort of more on the front forefront and they always have been. But um, you think that's changing now? Yeah, because it's more readily acceptable that women do other things and there's more women doing it. And so, yeah. and I think that's one of the benefits. I think I'm in a good spot in that sense and that I can empower some maybe other people because they come through the museum and the most asked question is how I got into this. And I think most of that is because I am a woman in the trades. Yeah. And uh, it's, I think it's, I get, I've had some young girls come and by themselves and do AFAD and I don't know if they would have maybe they would have come before I don't know yeah. but you never know yeah. so I just know that people come in here and they're like wow I didn't know people still did this maybe the famous last words is yes uh, craft is a good thing